One day, while working our way to level 30, we find a new perk option in our level up menu called Contract Killer. It requires level 14 and it only has one rank. Once you have the Contract Killer perk, any good character you kill will have an ear on their corpse. This ear can then be sold to a certain person, whose identity is disclosed when you take the perk, for caps and negative karma. We can take this perk at any karma level, so even good karma characters can take the Contract Killer perk. After taking the perk, we find that a new note has been downloaded to our Pip-Boy, Littlehorn and Associates. Dear Sir and or Madam, Do you find yourself with an absence of moral fortitude? Is the notion of having a moral quandary alien to you? In your opinion, is a conscience inconceivable? Then you are the sort of person we are looking for at Littlehorn and Associates. Stop by our offices on the eastern side of the large scrapyard in the Wasteland for details. Yours sincerely, Daniel Littlehorn. We remember the scrapyard. It was here where we found dog meat many moons ago. We recall seeing a shack in the scrapyard that was locked. We did not have access to it. But after taking this perk and receiving Daniel's message, the next time we arrive at the scrapyard and head to the shack, we see that the door is unlocked. Inside, we find four secretaries furiously typing on typewriters. No time must work. No time must work. I'm sorry. I don't have time to talk to you. Too busy. So busy. Never stop. We can't help you. Only Mr. Littlehorn can help you. They don't say much, and they don't appear to be enjoying their work. Sadly, we don't know much more about these associates than what we see in this room, though the Fallout 3 strategy guide does give us a bit more detail. It says, quote, Furiously typing and thankful to have gainful employment with Littlehorn and Associates, these four secretaries spend their time creating and filing records of all associates' activities across the East Coast. As life is cheap, hard work is expected, not rewarded. They urge us to chat with Daniel Littlehorn, the author of the message we found in our Pip-Boy, and the man sitting at a desk on the southern end of the shack. On the wall above him is a beautiful painting, and we've seen this before. We remember seeing this painting in the Underworld. We found it hanging on the wall in the second concourse. It's a fitting portrait because the subject matter depicts Dante and Virgil visiting the Underworld in Dante's The Inferno, part of his Divine Comedy. The scene depicts an alchemist and heretic named Capochico being bitten in the neck by a fraudster named Gianni Shishiki, who had used fraud to claim another man's inheritance. Dante and Virgil encountered this scene while exploring the eighth circle of hell. This circle was dedicated to those accused of fraud. Perhaps this painting says everything we need to know about the activities going on here at Littlehorn and Associates. Indeed, we learned that this painting is an intentional and possibly ironic choice by Daniel Littlehorn himself. The guide reads, quote, An elderly man with a sharp suit and a penchant for French traditionalist painters, Daniel Littlehorn has run his organization for as long as any of his secretaries can remember. Although now in his late 70s, Littlehorn is a commanding but unseen presence across the wasteland. If good men falter, if innocents are slain, or water supplies become more tainted, you can bet Littlehorn's clandestine organization is behind it. When ready, we can interview the man himself. Ah, yes, we've been waiting for you. Well, hello there. I assume that you've come about the contract that we're offering. We're always pleased to see a new associate. Welcome, a most hearty welcome to our little business. You may darken our doorstep at any time, so long as you bring me what I ask for. Yep, I'm here about the deal. Good, good. Direct. To the point. I like that in an employee. Then you understand what your purpose is. Remind me what this deal is again. The deal is this. You are now in the employee of Littlehorn and Associates. We deal in many affairs, most of which are not your concern. Your duties are as follows. You will bring me the ears of the good people of the world, and in turn, I will give you the wealth you crave. The more you bring, the wealthier you will be, and the happier I will be with you. That's not so hard now, is it? Body parts for money. I like that. Now pay me. 
Oh, how we do love enthusiasm in our employees. The deal is quite simple, as you know. Now, what would you ask of us? What do you do here? This is the current home of Little Horn and Associates. This is where we operate our little business. We dabble in this and that. I'm sure you've seen our work around the wasteland and haven't even realized it. We prefer to operate quietly, which is why we employ individuals such as yourself. Why do you want ears? Now that's the sort of question which will endanger our relationship. You are providing a service, and we are providing payment. It is there your questions end. Understand? What do these people do? They are fellow associates such as yourself. They simply possess a different set of skills than you. Who are you, anyway? I am Daniel Littlehorn. I offer you the currency that you crave in exchange for services aligned to your skills. And that, friend, is what we are to each other. I've been doing this a very long time, and I find that the less we know about each other, the smoother our relationship will be. If you recall from my short series on Tenpenny Tower, I have three ears that I collected from Roy Phillips and his gang. When we're ready, we can offer them to Daniel. Why, look who it is! My favorite associate! Have you brought me what I need? I have ears to sell you. And we will happily take them in trade, friend. Here, take them all. Most excellent! We love a good and loyal employee. And as a good and loyal employee, here is your reward. With that, we lose karma and gain 10 caps per ear. However, if we have very evil karma, our rewards are a bit different. Most excellent! And you have exemplified yourself in the eyes of Little Horn and Associates. One with a heart as black as yours deserves to be rewarded for it. We shall include a bonus in your pay this time. Enjoy it! Might I recommend booze, or gambling, or perhaps a nice chem habit? We again lose karma, but this time we get a bonus of 15 caps per ear. If we explore his office, we find a box underneath his desk. Inside we find a bunch of empty whiskey bottles. Looks like Daniel has a bit of a drinking problem. And inside we also find one rat away. Strangely enough, nothing here is set to owned, so we can loot it without gaining negative karma. We see a suitcase wedged between his desk and the wall, but we can't interact with it. And we can't interact with his desk either. We do, however, find a small tray next to his desk, and beneath a ruined book, we find a copy of Lying Congressional Style. And beneath that, we find two stim packs, all of which we can loot without karma loss. But the suitcase frustrated me. I really wanted to loot it, but sadly we cannot access it. There's one tin of Mentats on his filing cabinets next to a camera, and we can't interact with any of the secretary's desks. Both Littlehorn and the secretaries appear to be ambivalent towards murder. If we murder one of these secretaries... Ah! Better her than me! <laughs> None of them care. We can keep going one by one and none of them care. Oh. Better hurt Good me. rates. Damn. Let's Where? Better hurt Good me. rates. Better hurt me. Me. However, when we try to kill Daniel Littlehorn himself, all we do is render him unconscious. We can't kill him. He's immortal. That leaves us with a perplexing question. Exactly what role does Littlehorn and Associates play in the Capital Wasteland? What I just showed you are the only references to Littlehorn and Associates in the entire game. So to come up with any other conclusions, we have to piece together evidence we find elsewhere. We can start with the Fallout 3 official strategy guide, but the guide has a brief description of this faction, saying, quote, Almost nothing is known about the mysterious Littlehorn and Associates. They occasionally employ individuals whom they feel suit their ends, although neither Daniel Littlehorn nor his glass-eyed associates will divulge anything about what those ends actually are. So Littlehorn and Associates is more than just a business. 
Instead of taking business from everyone, they specifically only do evil jobs, and their prey are always good people. Normally when a corporation is involved putting profit motive before ethics, they don't go out of their way to do evil, they just don't bother refraining from doing so. But Little Horn and Associates are different. They go out of their way to do evil. They use mercenaries like the Lone Wanderer after examining their exploits and finding them to be without ethics, morals, or remorse. But I think they also employ other mercenary factions to get the job done, in particular, the Talon Company. If we play a good karma character, we'll randomly get attacked by members of the Talon Company. The Talon Company are hostile towards everyone, including evil karma characters, but they only go out of their way to track you down if you have good karma. Talon Company! Kill them all! After killing them on their corpses, we find a new note called Private Contract Kill the Lone Wanderer, whatever your name is. Boys and girls, we've got ourselves another holier-than-thou white knight needs putting down. Here are the details. They then list our name, race, and gender. The bounty is 1,000 caps this time around, and for a change of pace, they want the head this time. Good hunting. Who was it that hired the talent company to kill us? It could be Mr. Burke. This event happened in my game only after disarming the bomb in the middle of Megaton. As we learned from my Tenpenny Tower series, Mr. Burke is extremely resentful of the Lone Wanderer for thwarting his plans, and he constantly vows vengeance. So, you're the genius who disarmed the bomb. Weeks of waiting and watching ruined! It's a pity you acted so hastily. In the future, best sleep with one eye open. It's shortly after this moment that we begin to become attacked by Talon Company mercs. Could Mr. Burke have been responsible for hiring these mercenaries to kill us? It's possible, but we also gain a big dose of karma after disarming the bomb, which easily pushes us into good karma character territory. The text of the note clearly says that we have been targeted based on our karma. It says we've got ourselves another holier-than-thou white knight who needs putting down. We get the clear indication that we are being targeted just because we're too good. And that is something that Littlehorn and Associates does. Could it be that Daniel Littlehorn is using mercenary groups like the Talon Company to do his dirty work? I think it's highly probable. In the Fallout 3 official strategy guide, we also read, quote, Currently, an unknown benefactor has hired the Talon Company to hunt down do-gooders. The reasons for this are unknown, but the effect is to keep the wasteland a lawless place where the guys with the biggest guns make the rules. And the Talon Company frequently has the biggest guns. Now bear in mind, the Talon Company will still attack evil karma characters when encountered in the wasteland. For example, if we take an evil karma character to the Talon Company's headquarters at Fort Bannister, they're all hostile. The difference is that they don't go out of their way to kill us if we're evil. They only seek us out if we're good because they've been hired to. Another piece of evidence that I think ties the Talon Company in with Littlehorn and Associates is from a quote that Pete Hines gave when doing an interview for GameSpy magazine. Over 10 years ago, when talking about the Talon Company, he referred to them as the Talon Corporation, not Talon Company. I think this reveals a lot. The word company can be more than one thing. It could be a business seeking to make money, or it could be a band of fellow fighters, a military company. That's the impression I got by their name. But when Pete Hines referred to them as the Talon Corporation, that implies that they're a business, a business that may be one of the many associates of Littlehorn and Associates. So we know that Daniel Littlehorn is seeking to target good people. And we know that he hires mercenaries to do this. But who is he doing this for? Where does he get his money? This gives us the same problem we had with the regulators. 
In my video on the regulators that you can watch here, we learned that the regulators were set up by a group of unknown individuals a decade before the events of Fallout 3. That gives the Lawbringers the funds they need to pay their mercenaries. One interesting note about both the regulators and Littlehorn and Associates is that their headquarters are really close to each other. If you leave the scrapyard, it's only a short walk before you come upon a farm with a shack, and inside the shack, we find Sonora Cruz, the leader of the Regulators. Is it just coincidence that the leader of a faction who hires you to kill evil people has a headquarters that's right next to the leader of a faction who hires you to kill good people? I don't know, I think that's a bit too coincidental. It almost gives me the impression that someone wanted them to be close together. Someone who wanted to keep an eye on both factions. Someone who may be funding both factions. I doubt very much that Sonora Cruz even knows about Little Horn and Associates, and vice versa. Otherwise, they would target each other, which they don't. Someone has gone to great lengths to make sure that neither faction knows about the other. So here we see the portrait of a very rich person or faction funding two different organizations to make sure that there is balance in the capital wasteland. But here I think balance is the wrong word, because it's not really balance, it's more like chaos. Good people are just randomly killed for being good. Evil people are just randomly hunted down for doing evil. I don't really know if this brings the wasteland into moral or karmic balance. Instead, it just adds instability to the wasteland and makes things much more chaotic. So we have to ask ourselves, who would benefit from chaos in the wasteland? It's hard for settlements to grow in wealth and power when they're surrounded by chaos, when they're surrounded by anarchy. It's harder for other factions to exert their influence on a location if the place is just filled with random chaos. I doubt, therefore, that the Brotherhood of Steel could be responsible for Littlehorn and Associates because their entire M.O. is to bring stability to the wasteland, to bring fresh water, to get rid of raiders, violent mercenaries, and super mutants that make it harder for people to freely live their lives. Perhaps it's the Brotherhood Outcasts, but the Outcasts aren't really a well-funded, highly organized group. Their only goal is to bring the Brotherhood more in line with its original codex. I don't see the Outcasts as having the resources or even the desire to bring chaos to the wasteland. This really leaves us with only one option, the Enclave. Would the Enclave benefit from this kind of chaos in the wasteland? One could argue that they could. By the time of the events of Fallout 3, the Enclave are licking their wounds from suffering defeat on the West Coast. They had been weakened, but they were not yet out of the game. They arrived in the Capital Wasteland sort of secretly. Sure, they sent out their iBots with Enclave Radio, but in the early stages of the game, we don't find them fighting super mutants or raiders or Talon Company. We don't find them protecting civilians or working as mercenaries. They're invisible. That's because they're in hiding. They're trying to re-establish their force, re-establish their power before they come out and make themselves vulnerable to attacks from raiders, mercenaries, super mutants, and other factions. While they're nursing their wounds, while they're re-establishing their power, they don't want to see another faction come to prominence in the Capital Wasteland. This gives them a motive to establish chaos. So from a tactical point of view, I'd imagine that the Enclave would want to take whatever steps it could to weaken other factions and other powers in the Wasteland to give the Enclave enough time to reassert its dominance, its power, and its governing authority. To that end, I could see them employing a wide range of tricks, from poisoning a water supply to keep people ill and unhealthy, or to even turn them into super mutants, making them unable to organize. Or even to create factions like Littlehorn and Associates that just hunts down people, and then the regulators to hunt down the evil people to make sure that they don't grow too powerful. I could see that as an enclave strategy to destabilize the area, to make it so that no one thrives, no one becomes rich, no faction becomes powerful, but the enclave. 
But that is just one theory. After all, we don't have an answer. So I'd love to know your thoughts. Who do you think is really secretly funding Littlehorn and Associates? Why is Daniel Littlehorn only hunting down good karma people? And is Littlehorn and Associates the true financier of the talent company Mercs, who are hired to hunt down the lone wanderer? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I publish a new Fallout video six days a week on a wide range of topics spanning all of the Fallout games, so if you want to make sure you don't miss my next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop, folks. Show no mercy. On the front, we've got a portrait with the text, show no mercy, and I have an alternative version that says ad victorium, as well as a version that has just the text ad victorium and just the portrait. The shirts come in a wide array of colors and in a variety of sizes, and I have a bunch of other designs and products available in the shop, so if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.